Okay. Are we live now? I don't know. We're having some technical difficulties here. We're trying to do like 10 different things at a time. I've got like three different windows open here. So I apologize if any of this stuff is uh, messed up or crazy. But uh, what we're doing is we're waiting right now for the Sony uh, NAB 2017 press event to start. Um, I'm checking out the live feed as we speak. Uh, I'm really definitely hoping that... Uh, we see uh, something good. I hope that it's not just um, camcorders. Although a brand spanking new E-mount camcorder, like their old uh, VG30 uh, handycams, I think that would be fantastic. Um, I wouldn't. I would not be opposed to a, a refresh uh, on that line in particular. So, uh, if you guys. Like I said, if you guys have any thoughts or suggestions, hop on over into the chat room. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about what particularly uh, that Sony might end up releasing today. And um, I got to be honest, I really, really want uh, the A7 Mark III today. I mean, that's really what I have my fingers crossed for. Some people are claiming that, you know, it, there's a potential that it could be either an A7 um R Mark III or an A7S Mark III, while I think that either of those announcements would be fantastic, um, I really hope that it's the A7 Mark III. That one is really, really getting to the point. So here is the here's the big wig over at Sony. What do we got? What do we got? Glad you guys could join us. Thanks for stopping in. Um... So I'm watching the live press event as we speak. So any, if any of you guys happen to catch information that I do not, please don't forget to post those uh, messages here in the chat room to let all of us know. Uh, that's the best possible way uh, for us to all get the information that we need. So uh, Mako Sports says, yes, I was hoping for a new VG camcorder. Me as well. Um A7 Mark III, or it will be silly for them not to. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if we're if, if we're not going to get you know just something you know dope as shit, then just don't hold a big press event. But I've said this before, and I'll say it again: Sony has a way sometimes with you know hyping up an event really really big, and then it's just nothing. Um, let's see. Igor9090 says, please, NEX7S. Honestly, I would not be opposed to a brand new NEX camera. I really wouldn't. All right, here's the president. Well, he's a sexy looking Asian man. I hope I look as good as he. What is it with, with Asian folks and black folks, man? They age so much better than white people. I mean, they really do. It's like they, they get enough cod liver oil or something in their diet and they just, they never, they never look old, old. Like we do. We just start, we just start drying up old people. <laughs> Um, Sully says, so what do we got today? Are we getting a new Sony action cam? Man, I hope not. You talk about being disappointed, prepping all day, reading all the, the rumor websites and stuff, and just keeping up with any little bit of basic information. If it ended up being just an action cam, I would, I would choke out a Sony executive. I really would. I think. <laughs> Uh, Mike says, uh, yep, I want the A7 Mark III too. Well, it sounds like everyone seems to be pretty much on the uh, on the same page. But we have to try to keep in mind that this is NAB. This is the National Association of Broadcasters event. So it's going to be video-centric. If it's, if it's a big announcement, like they've been hyping this up, it's got to have something that's involving or talking about. Uh, so it's going to have to be something with amazing video recording capability. So, I mean, if this was WPPI or something like that, then yes, I could totally see, you know, something that was more photo centric, but whatever it is, it has to be video centric at this particular event. <laughs> Mako Sports says, uh, laughing my ass off cod liver. Yes, dude, that stuff, man, it just moisturizes the skin or something. I don't know. Keeps your keeps your junk from shriveling up. I mean, just keeps everything smooth as a baby's ass. Um, Christian says, "Give me an A nine seven S plus or a A nine seven or God damn it, an A nine S, please." Um, see, I I genuinely think I mean, I think that the A nine 
7 would probably be the more likely uh, type of camera that they would release if it wasn't going to be an A7 uh, Mark III, uh, just because the A7S was heavily video-centric. I mean, obviously not many people want um, to uh, shoot photographs in 12 megapixels uh, and, and pay $3,000 for it. So you buy the A7S strictly for that beast of low light capabilities you buy the a7r for that massive amount of resolution so um yeah if they were going to be releasing anything it, it's definitely going to have to be heavily centered on the uh the video side or i mean it's just it doesn't make any sense um i don't know why my chat room is just completely blank it doesn't make any sense whatsoever over here I'm literally having to read the uh, the chats from my stream account here. Let me see if I can find it on my channel, but I, I don't think I can. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I know what I did wrong. All right, so we've got this guy here just basically stroking us, giving us Sony philosophy. Sony Media Cloud Services, no one gives a crap. We just want to see the hardware. We want to see your gear, bro. Get your gear out. Sully says, I'm so sad, man. I was supposed to be at NAB right now, but my plans fell through. Uh, <laughs> can you repay, uh, replay what the president is saying? Yes, technically I can. Um, Um, well, I mean, I, I'll tell you what, I will try to do it. If it comes out horrible, you guys, again, you all help me out and you put, uh, let me know in the comments if it's not, uh, if it's not acting right. So here we go. Thank you, Katsunori. Hello, everyone. Let me know how that sounds. Sony is well recognized as an imaging company, but cameras are just one part of the bigger picture. At Sony, imaging extends beyond the camera to the total production and distribution workflow, covering HDR, IP, and a full range of media solutions. Good deal, good deal. These four pillars will provide media companies with the solutions they need to meet their customers' demand today and for the future. Let's start with imaging. Yes, let's start the with sensors imaging. sensors we make are in every type of device, from the cell phones that you have in your pocket to the cameras that shot the Super Bowl. Oh, you won't put those screens on TV your cameras. Shows. We want a touch screen. cameras address every application and are used by award-winning cinematographers, documentarians, news directors, sports, and entertainment producers. Speaking of awards, the industry has recognized Sony for its imaging leadership. I'm proud to say Sony's F65 was recently honored with a Scientific and Engineering Academy Award. TechPon says A7S Academy Mark III or not A9S uh, is coming June. pioneering high-resolution imaging sensor, probably true. excellent dynamic range, and full 4K output, Woo! as well as Sony's unique photo site orientation and true raw recording that delivers exceptional image quality. Sony was also recognized with an engineering Emmy for the first two-thirds inch 4K three sensor system. This imaging technology is used in the HDC 4300 camera. Introduced only two years ago, the 4300 has already become the standard for sports and live entertainment. Our new P43 box camera is engineered with the same 4K two-thirds inch sensor technology and works on the same platform. We continue to develop imaging technologies supporting everything from single camera operation to multi camera live. I'll tell you what, guys, uh, I would actually Here's like to see right them compete with Black Magic and have an extremely high dynamic the range camera. Maybe even something like that. Perfect for three scenes this surround video, virtual reality, POV. That looks a lot like Black Magic's little mini cinema this camera. This powerhouse adds Genlock to sync multiple cameras. Through firmware upgrades, the FS5 can now do continuous 
120 frames per second in full HD. Bailey, you're C1 just in time. Nothing new yet has been released. More reliable and stable but they are building it up. They're stroking us very slowly right now. Our commitment to the F5 and F55 is reinforced with firmware version 9. New features now include more selectable frame rates, up to 120p in 4K, and synchronization with Sony's wireless adapters to enable streaming and cloud-based workflows. The combination of the F55 and R7 recorder takes advantage George of George Sorrell says no new camera is coming out. Format. Don't tell us that. This don't was don't say that. To get content off media cards and into the We are actually here. We're all waiting with bated breath for a new camera. Performance and retaining tonal gradation. <laughs> don't say no new camera. Time and money. They are slow stroking Let's us though. One customer who is experiencing these benefits every day. Oh man, here we go. We got a video reveal. What, what, One of the things we've always asked for is more color depth uh, when we're shooting because we're a lot of times in less than perfect circumstances. So we're not necessarily lighting a scene um, and having the ability to shoot raw or a compressed raw format for us is huge, especially in documentary and television work because it means we can go in and pull a lot of detail out of scenes that otherwise really would be subpar. The R7 and Exocian LT, especially, has allowed. Yeah, they're not going to be hyping up all this color all stuff. And get uncompressed raw, drive, that's what they're talking about here. Uh, there's no way that they're going to hype that it's much stuff up, us show us this type of footage, and, and, and not and give us. This is going to be a new. Is, a new cinema style, probably with uncompressed raw footage, probably something that will compete directly with the Blackmagic cinema cameras. And come out with a a master quality finished product. Shooting on the F55 with the R7, it's really changed how we put a show together. Great. Great, great, great. Our new card reader, the AXS AR1, enables high-speed transfer and uses a Thunderbolt 2 interface. And we introduced a new DVF EL200 OLED <laughs> viewfinder Photography F5 Junkie said that he reminds F5. him of that geologist from the Big Bang Theory, and, and it's true. Brightness. He looks just like him. Our complete lineup of ENG camcorders can handle any news production I knew it was going to be camcorders. Come on, though. XAVC workflows with wireless and file transfer capabilities. Sony studio camera systems are dominant in sports and live entertainment. The HDC 4800 Ultra High Frame Rate camera supports up to 16 times HD and eight times 4K, and 4K HDR, unique for its class. Add cutout and zoom and integration with our PWS 4500 replay server, and you have a perfect- All of this stuff here is mega pro products. equipment. You know, we're, you're talking- The 4800's new one-time consideration- Tens of thousands of dollars to get this kind of gear. To use it as a studio camera for the most But I gotta be honest, I love to see where Sony productions. goes with some of their tech because the native 4K They're bleeding edge in the lower end line. I mean, it, it, it's almost hard to imagine even massive pros support 4K, HD, HDR, not getting into uh, Sony as well these days. HDR and SDR can be output simultaneously. We're also making our HD studio cameras HDR capable with our new HDR and 4K up converter. Now producers can create 4K or HD HDR and 4K or HD SDR with the camera they already own. Now we've mentioned HDR a few times already in terms of cameras, but Sony is taking a much broader and holistic approach to HDR. To meet the growing requirements for HDR content at every level of production, Sony is offering expanded 4K and HD HDR capabilities throughout its entire product line for live and scripted applications. At NAB, we are featuring Sony's instant HDR workflow, designed for lower scale productions, corporate or event work, where delivery times and budgets are factors. The instant HDR workflow enables simple shooting, editing and viewing of HDR content in HLG without the need for color grading. Sony's compact camcorders, the FS5 and Z150, 
Both support this workflow using the HLG recording function. Sully Cortez says, using Will Sony be the first to bring HDR 8K to the mainstream unlike Another Red? Major development in Sony's the way they're talking, at least at least right now, it certainly sounds HDR. like they're alluding to something in that direction. This efficient workflow enables simultaneous production of 4K HDR and HD SDR using the S log curve to ensure the highest quality content from our cameras throughout the entire production process. For the past two years, Sony has been working with every leading sports network in the US and Canada to streamline the SR Live workflow. One customer who has taken advantage of SR Live technology is Dave Mazza of NBC Sports Group and Olympics. Let's hear from Dave about the recent successful 4K HDR broadcast. Two things have happened that have really been spectacular. One is high dynamic range, which we tested in Rio and are excited about the future of that, uh, along with 4K. And the other is the high frame rate cameras that Sony's now coming out with. Both of those two things are displaying much better images than we've ever had before. Everybody knows 4K is coming. What, what wasn't clear for the past few years was whether or not HDR was gonna come along with it. And uh, we wanted to do a test of both at the opening. All right, so just based on what they're hyping up right now, so they're working, they're they're kind of massaging us into uh, something, and it all seems to 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 lead into it, at least for this first product. You know, it looks like it's going to be something involving the the handicam, the not the handicam, but the uh, a camcorder, uh, potentially a, a much better uh, 4K workflow. Um, but there's a really good chance that they could go even higher than that. I don't know if that's going to be the first product, but uh, it definitely looks like we're getting a new high-end uh, professional level uh, video camera here. So I really, really, no one, I mean, I got to be honest. I mean, I know that there's probably like 2% of the population that are literally watching this right now. And they're like, this is going to be the best shit ever. Um, this just seems like a very cumbersome Workflow for me, I, I don't know why more people don't use something that's a, a lot smaller, a lot lighter, and a lot more efficient, but who the hell am I to judge? To fully realize how spectacular HDR is, you have to see it on a Sony professional monitor. We're expanding our line of HDR monitors with the new BVM-171, perfect for compact HD HDR monitoring in trucks or on set. And now, welcome back John Stutter to discuss our IP and media cloud services. Thank you. All right. Um, so they're going to be talking about cloud services right now. Um, again, now we've got a, a really uh, old white guy up here on stage. Again, he's not getting enough cod liver oil, so he's looking a little, a little dry. But um, so thus far, they're focusing heavily on their pro uh, line of cameras, uh, pro services, um, and these are for high-end sports shooters, uh, high-end um, camcorders, you know, the ones that cost tens of thousands of dollars uh, just to get a working rig. Uh, this is not exactly, <laughs> you know, what any of us were hoping for, at least initially. I mean, this event, at least the press part, I believe is supposed to go on for at least a couple of hours. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys will know uh, probably before I will. Um, there is a very good chance though, uh, like zoom Chris said here in the chat that it could be a brand new FS nine. I know, uh, of probably 10 or 15 of my higher end videography, uh, peers that would absolutely love that camera. Um, a lot of people uh, have been waiting for a refresh in the FS line. So, uh, I can seriously see that tickling the fancy of quite a few people, um, Mago Sports says, but if there was an FS9, uh, where would the uh, F5 sit? Uh, well, you know, we also have to understand, too, that the FS line uh, hasn't had a refresh in, in, in quite a while. The last one that even sort of kind of got me interested was the FS7. Now, the FS5 uh, was... A pretty good camera that they came out with uh, but when I saw the specs and then I saw a couple of the comparisons of the video uh, even to very very uh, less expensive options like the the a 6300 at the time I mean it was sharper had better low light performance was cleaner um, it just didn't seem you know 
I, I know that the, the more professional workflow is going to work for, for a lot of people, but it's just not for us. My audience is not interested, for vast vastly not interested uh, in that particular workflow. So that part kind of sucks. Um, I'm really going to be disappointed if they don't release uh, a full-on uh, A7 or uh, an A9 camera today. Um, but like I said, it's very early in this press event, so what we can do is keep our fingers crossed. Uh, Mago Sports says, uh, or uh, Sully says, <laughs> uh, in drooling over this because uh, this tech will work, it's uh, way into the, the smaller cameras, and that's true. Uh, the photography junkie said, Philip Bloom will be all over this stuff, and he would, uh, especially if they release a new FS line of cameras. Um, I, I know that he tends to, to lean a little bit more towards the smaller style form factor cinema cameras, whether it be the Blackmagic or, or the Reds uh, or the FS5 or the FS7, stuff like that. Um, it's just more portable. It's a hell of a lot easier to wield. Some of those cameras are just entirely too big. Um, <laughs> yeah, cod liver oil, dude. Look, he's all dry and shit up there, man. He needs more of that. Um, it was kind of shitty, uh, the uh, FS5 for the price. And I agree. I mean, when I was looking at the FS5 uh, and then started looking at a few of the comparisons, I mean, even the, the A6000 line and the A7 line was, I mean, not only better low light performance, but it was, it, it looked like it was so much cleaner. Like the image was uh, way sharper uh, on, on those uh, DSLR or the mirrorless side of things. Um, so I, while I liked the thought and for the price, I mean, it would have been nice to have a really good, um, uh, dedicated video camera with lots of functionality and lots of buttons on the exterior. It just didn't look, uh, I mean, all that stuff is worth nothing. If at the end of the day, your shot doesn't look as good as it could have been with a $1,000 a 6,300. So that's just, this is my thought process though can quickly organize, manage, and search for content across multiple locations. Navigator X's intuitive plug-in architecture easily adapts to change in workflows. Companies across multiple segments are adopting this solution. Most recently, NBC Row, Full Sail University, and Wells Fargo. Let's hear from Wells Fargo on how Navigator X is enhancing their workflow. Okay, well, uh, I don't think that any of us here watching this stream uh, is interested in this part. Um, while I find all of this interesting, I mean, let's be real, guys. The A7 Mark III, an A7S Mark III, or an A7R Mark III would blow this up. Like I said, I think that there's probably like six people watching right now that really, not, not even on my channel, but like... The, the, this is a very limited market segment, and I know that Sony has to cater to this market as well. Uh, but they could have easily released all of this information without all this hoopla. I mean, I guess it's kind of self-masturbatory or whatever, uh, you know, to kind of hype themselves up. But, you know, you've got billions of people that are waiting for something that is much, much consumer grade or professional grade without all of this but again i'm trying to remember that this is nab and all of this stuff in this announcement is 100 percent relevant to the national association of broadcasters which most of us are not enables extreme scalability reliability and flexibility with features like web-based proxy and field editing <laughs> broadcasters the advantage of being able to uh, deliver content faster to multiple platforms Sony has always been about options, whether you prefer to store content in the cloud or on-prem. That's where ODA Gen 2 comes to play. The newest generation doubles the read-write speeds and source capacity of a single cartridge using a new high-capacity optical disc. It can easily scale from a standalone tabletop drive up to a library that supports petabytes of data. ODA's tight integration with Sony's media cloud services. I almost have to wonder. I'm just going to interject. It's just the old crusty white guy talking. Um, I have to wonder, like, you know, when they get like f five people out there 
and everyone's like, dude, show us the shit, man. Where is the good stuff? Um, and who was it? Someone in the comments just said, who cares about this shit? Show us the new stuff. We all know the old models. <laughs> we all know what the old models are. Um, Zoom Chris says they seem to have some sort of continuity in numbering uh, the camera line. So uh, if the A9, why not the FS9? And they do. They do have some continuity. So. Okay, so some people are. Okay, that has nothing to do with this, though. Uh, the C Panther says the uh, new A9 has already been announced. Now let's see the new A7R Mark III. Um, I, like I said, I would be fine with any three of those. If they do manage to get off this Ultra Pro stuff um, and they happen to announce, like I said, maybe a refresh of the VG30 uh, series of cameras, that would totally interest me. I would I would heavily be interested in that particular announcement. Uh, and if they do, uh, I will shut the F up and watch that uh, intently. Uh, Mavfan1 says, to the people at NAB, this is the cool stuff, and the A7 and A9 are toys. And he is 100% right. So, they, they a lot of people that get into this kind of stuff watch all of uh, our type channels, me and Max and Hugh Brownstone, and, um, all of, and they're just like, ah, who cares, you know, play with your little DSLRs. <laughs> Photography Junkies also says, in honesty, the broadcast industry, while smaller, is massive in terms of income for them. Uh, so to me, it's not surprising the hoorah. And it's true. They have a much larger um, um, profit margin on this, you know, uh, more professional stuff. I mean, m at this point in the game, most of it's all like, you know, uh, technology, digital stuff. Um where all they have to do is just add more and more components. And if the camera gets bigger and bigger and bigger because they need the room for it, most of these professionals really don't give a shit. I mean, they, they uh, have been working with these larger cameras for you know, a very long time. They're not looking in, they're not looking at anything in, involving size or the weight or the portability. I mean, every one of these guys has a 40 pound tripod. Um, none of these people whatsoever at NAB sitting at this press event, of Sony's right this second give a crap about shedding the weight they probably do but they're not expecting it whereas us on the other hand we're looking for that smaller lighter uh, more portable setup so Sully Cortez says I will laugh if it doesn't have a flip out screen dude I'm... don't don't laugh I, I want a flip out screen on one of these cameras so bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jason Hampton says the A7S Mark III is what I want. And that's really what I want. Uh, I could honestly, I could kind of take or leave uh, the A7S Mark III or the A7R Mark III. Um, because I, to be perfectly honest, as far as like low light capabilities, even um, at, you know, 12,800, like, I am perfectly happy with that level of I, uh, ISO performance uh, on these Sony cameras. I mean, even though they're not as good as on the A7S line of cameras, they are 100% usable in most circumstances. For a lot of us, for a lot of us new media people, most of our um, content is not only recorded and delivered specifically knowing that it's going to be going on the web and being delivered via phone, tablet, or TV. And most TVs these days, even really good ones, only have between like seven and nine uh, stops of dynamic range. So to have, you know, something that's uh, extremely low light, it's it's nice to have. I just don't know many people that go, you know what, I would love to shoot this scene. But I tell you what, let's really spice it up. Uh, let's do it in complete darkness, you know. Uh, most people, if they go out to shoot something, I mean, they're going to light that scene appropriately. So for the A7S, I can kind of, I can kind of leave it. To, I mean, if I got it on a really good deal, maybe. Um, the A7R, uh, while I love high resolution, really, I want that balanced camera. I want something that is really good in video. Doesn't have to be really good in low light, but definitely good. 
Um, I want about 11 or 12 stops of dynamic range. That would be perfectly fine with me. Uh, and I would also really like to see uh, something with dual card slots and a flip out screen. Please, for the love of Christ, give us a camera in this form factor with a with a flip out screen. I want an articulating screen. So yeah, uh, it's so, someone actually just said um, rumors, or Sully just said that uh, rumors are they are making an APS-C camera with the same low light capabilities as the A7S series. And if they did, if they did, I'm going to be all over it. If they can get it at, like in that really ridiculously small form factor, give that to me, please. So I, honestly, I can't, uh, I can't imagine them not releasing uh, an upgraded A7 camera because uh, according to the rumors, um, they had just back in February registered a brand new camera that had the name designation that the all the other Sony A7 uh, cameras had, which was what, WW32 and then four numbers after that. Um, that is a, uh, that's an A7 designation, name designation. Um, so I, I really, really hope that they release it today. I don't want to wait till June. And that's the reason all of you guys are here watching this with me is because you all don't want to see it in June. You all want to see it today. All right, let's see what this old crusty white guy is saying. Over about 2,400 shows a month. We have multiple prep points, four ingest points across the whole station group. And so therefore we're able to service up our 48 television stations. Yeah, Sully just says, um, sounds like you're mentioning the uh, GH5 mark. Yeah, 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 I know. I Look, I know that I, I took a dump on the autofocus, and I stand by that dump. I stand by that heaping pile of dump as far as their autofocus is concerned. But I, I, I'm still, I, I got to be honest, Like I, I liked what I saw everywhere else. Everywhere else. I like the lower rolling shutter. The The Micro Four Thirds provides uh, a lot less rolling shutter, so I'm definitely not opposed. But for the amount of <clears throat> stuff that I would use uh, that for, I would almost be more likely to opt for maybe the GH5 for some of my vlogging, uh, uh, YouTube stuff, uh, personal projects. If I'm behind the camera, the GH5 would actually be really good. Uh, again, I just... I dread the thought of trying to reinvest all of my money into yet another camera line setup. So, uh, ultra, uh, ultra muck says, um, I do not think Sony is going to replace the a seven S Mark two and the a seven Mark two already with new ones. Maybe I'm wrong. The a seven, uh, Mark two has been around for like three years now. The a seven S or, or no, um, the A7 Mark II, I think, was four years ago, maybe. No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm wrong. It's two years ago. The A7S III is, or the A7S Mark II, is already three years old now. Uh, GamesArt86 says, uh, I know, right? What the hell are they doing? I might switch to Panasonic just because of how this event started. Um, Baylor Rap says, A7S Mark II with uh, 8K. I gotta be honest, I don't think we're gonna see 8K. Uh, in these cameras, at least this generation, maybe in two years, maybe in two years, I don't see it. If they did, I would be highly, highly surprised. <laughs> uh, Elaine New uh, Nugen says, uh, what about uh, the rumors about the uh, RX-1R? As far as what I've heard about that is that they are going to be integrating 4K uh, into that camera, which w I think would be fantastic. I mean, having that sensor and that lens paired perfectly paired together, um, just amazing image quality. If it actually were able to be record, uh, record something in 4K uh, without the time limit, I mean, that would be ideal for a lot of people. I mean, if you just needed a fixed lens camera and you had absolutely, uh, you know, no desire to swap the lenses, if you just wanted a beautifully paired prime lens with a, a sensor that's perfectly tailored for that lens, you would create some amazingly beautiful um, stuff with that camera. 
especially in 4K, because you take that 4K, you down res it, down at 1080, you're talking just gobs and gobs of detail. <laughs> Zoom Chris says, I think they'll announce the GHS-6. <laughs> yeah. What? Is this announcement over? No, 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 no. This, the, what? No, 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 no. The, the, that's not it. That's not it. Surely to God, that's not it. Can't be it. Man, did we just get, like... Do you see what I'm saying? If this really is the end of it... <laughs> Everyone in this chat over here is screaming fake news. <laughs> but I told you. I told you. Now, if this is the end, I have said it. I even called it in two different live streams. I, I literally said that there have been so many times where Sony will, you know, bluster up and, and, and hype up an event and then give us absolutely nothing. Oh, this is so disappointing. What the hell? It, it, it couldn't, it couldn't really be over. Yeah, they just basically got a bunch of... They, they basically got, you know, 5,000 photo nerds together and gave us nothing. Wow. Totally uh, unimpressed with this effing announcement. Oh, man, this can't be it. <laughs> yeah, what the hell, man? This is, this, this is not real. Like, that... Are you serious? They just shut off the live stream. Oh, well. Um, okay, so we spent 39 minutes of our life. Uh, we saw nothing that we were hoping to see. Yeah, Sully Cortez says, We got trolled, and man, do I ever feel like I got trolled. This is not... Uh, this was not the... Uh, the announcement that I was hoping for today at all. I mean, they literally focus 100% on their ultra pro line of cloud services, data transfer systems. I don't even think they talked about a camera. Did they, did any, did they even talk about a camera? Yeah, I mean, what the hell? They basically went, "Hey, look." I mean, really, what they could have said, they, they, the the old white guy after the the nice smooth Asian guy came out there, the old white guy, he should just come out and say, "Look, man, we 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 literally we got nothing. If y'all were expecting anything hype, just there's the door, and just saved us the time. That's what they should have done for real. They should have just prefaced the whole event and just said, "Look, if anyone is here." expecting something amazing just go home right now yeah that is uh i mean they they literally shut down the the stream so we we've got nothing um uh, games art says fuck it getting the gh5 waited over six months <laughs> uh caleb b says uh i guess it was stolen gh5 uh good luck with iso get an a7s mark ii uh, they talked about their upgrade pass to 4K for their pro equipment, which was, you know, a, a nice chat. But, uh, like, I don't think that there was a single person in this live stream that actually gave a shit about that. I mean, I mean, it's no wonder more and more people are focusing more on the middle of the road and, and kind of leaving the quote-unquote professionals in the dirt. 
Um, because, I mean, it, it really does focus solely on, like, this very small segment. It's just, oh, Christ. Um... <laughs> Games Art says, no, I didn't talk about any fucking camera, but Wells Fargo was in the video. Woo! <laughs> um, KDB Studios, 8 p.m. What's at 8 p.m.? Are they supposed to have something at 8 p.m.? Because I'm not doing another live broadcast. No, see, it literally says right here on the side. Sony's uh, Electronics NAB Press Conference, Sunday, April 23rd, from 6 to 6.45 p.m. So that was it. It's a press conference for a preview of the newest products and technologies for broadcast and production. All right, so we're um, I mean we're we're totally trolled. I mean I'm I'm done. <laughs> no, um, I do want to let everyone know uh, because I don't think that I would be doing my. Uh, my service to you guys, I just heard, because I, I, I get these uh, automatic um, updates from B&H constantly, especially for people who are affiliates and stuff, that Sony did, in fact, drop the price. Um, if you look down in the description box down below, they did drop the price. And this is what kind of got me a little bit hype for this, uh, this announcement today, was that they dropped the price on the A7S Mark II and the A7R Mark II by like $300 or something. Um, so it was a significant price drop on those two cameras. Um, so that was what was, uh, that's what made me think, oh shit, man, they, there's a good chance if they're dropping the price right now, uh, there, there's a very good chance that we could actually see uh, brand new A7 cameras today. Uh, if nothing else, uh, a brand new A7 Mark III. So, um, if any of you guys are in the market, I mean, I don't know, uh, but clearly you guys are because we were all here for a, a new product announcement that, uh, none of us got. So we got Rick road like a mofro, but I told you all, uh, I, if, if you guys have been around for any length of time, uh, just in like the last live stream that I did on Friday afternoon, I said, you're going to have to prepare yourself. You're going to have to know that there is a very good chance, uh, that, Sony is going to hype this event up and then give us absolutely nothing. So, um, uh, another thing that I also wanted to, to mention is that when this new, uh, when, when these new replacement cameras come out, when the new re refresh cameras actually do drop, for those of you that have been wanting to get into that higher tier uh, Sony A7 uh, line of cameras, that would be the time to do it. Right now is not necessarily the time to do it. Uh, Sony always, always drops the price. And just a quick reminder that a lot of people end up putting their old gear up for sale used uh, and you can get even well taken care of uh, gear much, much cheaper. So, all right, guys, if that was all the announcement, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. But uh, if you guys enjoy what I do on the channel, please consider heading on over to uh, my Patreon uh, page and consider uh, supporting the channel. Throw in a buck. I mean, I've literally had the exact same two Patreons uh, forever. No one else has decided to chip in. Like, I've got a $1, you know, chip in i've got a, a two dollar super fan and i've also got a five dollar i also have brand new sony alpha t-shirts for any of you that are wanting to buy so if you all would prefer to get something out of your contribution to the channel go grab yourself a, a an alpha shirt if you happen to be a sony shooter all that stuff totally helps me out helps me continue to do these videos um so i really do appreciate everyone that has helped by either you know sitting here and talking with me, watching my videos, just being a general supporter uh, of the channel. You guys are amazing. You are like the best audience that anyone, any YouTuber could ask for. So uh, you guys always provide me with extremely awesome feedback and information. So uh, at any rate, um, the rumors were not true. I mean, a lot of people were expecting something amazing today and we just, uh, we just weren't able to get it. I mean, uh, I guess Sony felt like the uh, Sony uh, 
the uh, the A9 was more than enough quote unquote consumer grade cameras for the week, and uh, they weren't just gonna they just weren't gonna do anymore. So again. Uh, that was the second announcement. Uh, they do have a third announcement planned for June. So if you guys um, are looking for a new camera in the spirit of the A5000, the A6000, or the A7 uh, line of cameras, it's probably going to be announced this summer. Um, at least that's my hope anyway. So... I'm going to read a few more comments, and then I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and let you all go on about your your, your Sunday afternoon. Um, Sully Cortez says, hell yeah, I'll get the shared word. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Sully. I appreciate that. Uh, by the way, and if any of you all actually want some other type of shirt, just give me the idea. I, I'm a graphic designer by trade, so uh, if you have any ideas, I will totally try to design something and throw it up here and, and help you guys out. So I help you, you guys help me. Um, Mako Sport says, uh, I, uh, I Loki need to cop one of those alpha sheets. Okay, I... I I couldn't figure out what you were trying to say there. Uh, Cade Lale says uh, the A6500 would hold you uh, up till uh, the release. And it should. Totally. I mean, it, it's a very, very capable camera. Absolutely. Uh, Video Master says, wait! Uh, since they released the A9 out of nowhere uh, and is releasing one month later, so wait for the A7S uh, Mark III. Again, more than likely, if they're going to do a massive refresh on their A7 line, it's going to be in June. At least that's the next planned announcement. So, I mean, that would seem like the logical next place that they're going to do a, a, a big camera release. Uh, George Sorrell says, as I said in the beginning, the cameras uh, for today. Jay and Max says, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Sully says, yep, uh, A7S Mark III, A7R Mark III, uh, A9000 in June, probably. So, you know... Before I go, though, I do want to say just one thing. Um, for those of us that have we have we have been patiently waiting for several different things from Sony, me myself included. Like I, I've been, but I, I used to do the exact same thing with Nikon. Once you get invested in a system, though, once you start getting invested, you tend to have more patience with your particular camera company. Uh, because you don't necessarily want, you don't want to abandon ship when you've got all this glass for your system, right? But I've got to be honest, it, it, the only thing that the, the GH5 is lacking for me is that autofocus. I don't know if they can fix that or not. Um, for people that shoot video, uh, and I do mean a lot of video, the the... The GH5 is probably at this point right here and now. If you are the main operator of that camera, the GH5 is probably the camera that you're going to want to buy. If you do a video, if you're looking for uh, a front-facing screen, if you're looking for uh, you know 10-bit 422, if you're looking for uh, a larger battery size, if you're looking for no recording limits, the, the GH5 probably is the camera to get. Now, if you need amazing autofocus, it is very it is a very real possibility you might have to have uh, a two-camera setup. Um, I don't like the fact that, uh, that Panasonic charges extra for their V-Log. I don't like it at all. I'm just going to be perfectly honest. Um, I don't like the fact that they invested absolutely none of their R&D dollars into that autofocus. Huge disappointment. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. If they had put some level of uh, phase detect autofocus in that camera, there'd be one sitting over here right now. No question. I liked the A. I, I liked the G7 and the uh, the G85 enough that I easily would have bought that either one of those cameras. Uh, the ergonomics are, are fantastic. I mean, they're ugly. They're DSLRs. They're not really pretty or anything. But, you know, as far as functionality goes, I mean, that touch interface is just the bomb, yo. Like, it is dope as fuck. Like, it, it's probably one of the better interfaces that you're ever going to find, at least right now, in this style of camera. 
And once you get used to that that type of interface, that is the the only way you want to do business. Going back to trying, uh, you know, fumble through some very fiddly menu system like you know Sony has with their mushy buttons and their less than optimal tactile sensational, you know, control wheels and stuff. You you just never want to go back to that again. You want to. Um, to just touch your effing screen, just like I do with my phone every single day of my life. Sony has a smartphone division. They make beautiful smartphones. Nobody buys them, but they're still really beautiful, and they're extremely functional. I don't know why, you know, the digital imaging, uh, digital imaging president just needs to walk over to the cell phone division president's office and just go, yo, whatever this is, give me that shit, have it on my desk, you know, by tomorrow. That's what needs to happen, you know? So, I don't know, man. I mean, there, there, there's just there's just not a lot um, that would keep someone that's been waiting for, for such uh, beefy video functions, especially for, like, I do video every single day of my life. I, I was recording B-roll, uh, you know, footage for my next video uh, this week. Uh, I've got, you know, you know, I've got a lot of video projects that I'm constantly working on, so... Right now, uh, as it stands, one of the best options is, in fact, the GH5. There, I said it. <clears throat> um, if you need amazing autofocus, grab a, uh, a Canon. If you can live with 1080p, grab a, uh, a, a, an ADD. Um, or if you need 4K, you grab a Sony, period, and, and that's how it goes. Uh, with Panasonic, you're going to get a much better interface. You're going to get no recording limits. You're not, you know, those are the facts, you know, people call me a Sony fanboy all the time. No, I like their products. But I have to be honest, I'm losing patience. I've been waiting for an articulating screen. I've been waiting for a full touch interface. I mean, I know that they're going to have it some point, at some point. I just don't know if it's going to be fast enough uh, for me. And, you know, I want it, I want it now. I wanted it 10 minutes ago while the... The, the 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 amazing skin of the black guy and the old crusty white dude was up there talking about shit that I gave no f's about. I wanted it right then and there. So, you know, if if they do in fact uh, release something in June, I'll give them till June. I mean, it's April. I mean, I, I literally have about a month and a half to wait. So, uh, if they come out in June and they've got something amazing, great, I'll buy it. No big deal. Um, but if they don't. Oh man, I'm going to be severely, severely disappointed. Um, there's always going to be a spot. I, I mean, I've, I've, I've already got two Sony cameras, so I don't want anyone to, to freak out or, or be worried that I'm not um, going to, uh, you know, keep my, my Sony cameras because I am. I mean, the, the autofocus is too damn good to, to not keep it. Uh, it shoots 4K. Um, my Sony a6300 is never overheated, so I don't have that many issues with what I have. Uh, but I want more. And um, there's absolutely no shame. And that's the reason you should always try and keep your lenses. You know, Always keep your lenses. I, no matter what system you were with or, or you're coming from or going to, if you buy lenses, uh, you, you go ahead and you keep them. So that if that particular camera company ever does do something amazing in the future... Um, you'll have the lenses to put back on that body, uh, you know, and then you just use adapters until, uh, until they do so that, you know, you're not, you're not, that's the reason Sigma is a fantastic, fantastic option right now. And, um, you know, Sigma makes lenses for both Nikon, Canon, uh, they make a few for Sony, um, and I do believe that they've got some that are, uh, or most of their uh, art series line of lenses are made for the Micro Four Thirds systems. So you, you keep your lenses, and when different camera companies do what you want, what you've been needing, what you've been looking for, then you you go buy a body. Uh, but you you know you've you've at least got the lenses to to work with you. Okay, <laughs> Sully says just became your biggest patron. Man, I definitely appreciate that, Sully. I definitely do. Thank you very much. Um, 
Mega Sports says, uh, isn't Canning trying to offer a paid upgrade for C-Log so, uh, so that the cameras don't have it uh, out of the factory can get it? Yes, uh, but they also want to charge you for it. They want to charge you 100 bucks. You've got to send it in, be without your camera for probably three to four weeks. It's like, thanks? Ow. And when you say ow, that's them putting their finger up your butt and... Yeah, I, I think it's a horrible, horrible move on Cannon's part. I'm really not sure what the hell they were thinking. Um, David Gomez says, uh, will they announce the A7 uh, first or the A7S Mark III or the A7R Mark III in June? What do you think? Um, in, in my mind, they have to they have to release the A7 Mark III first. I mean, it's the oldest one. It needs the refresh the worst. Um, although it does already have five uh, axis in-body image stabilization, um. Yeah, some of the I mean, they they all need to refresh. They're all due. Uh, I don't know which one. Maybe they'll do all of them. Who the hell knows? Um. Obviously, we don't know Jack Squat because I mean, this press event was just a huge Debbie Downer for us today. But uh, if I had to, I, if I had to guess, I would say that it's probably going to be the A7 Mark III today. Uh, or not today, but uh, in June. So there's that. Okay. A couple more comments and then I'm out of here, boys. Um, Zoom Chris says, you got my pledge, sir. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that, brother. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, Lord of... Lord of the Lints? <laughs> yeah, I think that's how you say your name. Uh, please, Sony, we are all your cameras that... Uh, why are all your cameras so fucking expensive? Uh, A7R Mark II for $3,700, uh, 3,700 euros here in the Netherlands. I bought the A7R, uh, the first one for, uh, 1,100 euros. Honestly, it's not that expensive considering what you get. I mean, the A7R is a studio camera. I think that it, it competes, genuinely competes, and maybe even in some circumstances rivals big, high quality, especially in resolution, big, high quality, uh, Medium format digital cameras like Phase One. I mean, you have to consider that the people that are buying the a the the Sony A Seven R they genuinely are looking for the utmost uh, in pristine quality. These are people the people that are buying that camera are putting their photographs in magazines. They are putting their stuff into um, the high resolution print applications. The average Joe doesn't need that. No one prints. Um, George says uh, they are trying to sell the A9 first before the new cameras come out. And you know what? George is probably 110% correct. They just had that huge announcement. They literally just had that huge announcement. And um, there's a very good chance that that's exactly what they're doing. I mean, you know, why would they... I, I, to be perfectly honest with you, George, th that camera was just not for the vast majority of us. Uh, I don't think that if they released an A7 Mark III today, that it was going to undercut their sales from the, the, the A9 whatsoever, because that camera is highly, highly focused for somebody that is, you know, that's not us, obviously. Um... Sully says, um, Mark, uh, how do I get uh, the dollar discount for the $5 Patreon towards buying a shirt? Uh, Going to order the Alpha shirt. Uh, love the Don't Be Negative 2. Sad it ends in four hours, though. Uh, it'll, the, the, the Don't Be Negative uh, should have another campaign after it. So if you're interested in that one, uh, there should be another cam campaign directly after that. Uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll get with you on the discount, brother. Um, Mike says, Mark, uh, what he meant uh, is why uh, are they so expensive in Europe? Uh, the A9 uh, will be 5,300 euros here. That's $5,760. Is that accurate? Is that the conversion rate going on right now? Wow. Yeah, I wouldn't buy it either. <laughs> I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, I wouldn't buy it either. 
The photography junkie says, and I shut uh, down playing Star Citizens for that announcement. I know, like, I, 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 I managed to work and do, like, pre-research and everything. I said, you know what? I've got a little bit of time. I'm going to go take me a nap so that I'm good and fresh for this announcement. I want to be as excited uh, as I possibly can be for this announcement. And we see, you see what we got, so... Uh, David Gomez says, uh, what about the uh, FS5 Mark II? I really thought that was for day. And, and so did I. I thought that they were going to release something like in that line, like a, an, an FS5 or a refreshed NEX, um, uh, like a VG30 camera. I would have loved either one of those things. I would have been actually perfectly fine with either one of those things. I mean, at least it would have made sense. But, I mean, it was literally all tens of thousands of dollars of the Ultra Pro stuff that... You know, you almost have to be a part of a news studio or something like that. Uh, you know, someone that's actually paying for all that in order to be on. So, I don't know. It's just, it's crazy. But, uh, I, I told you all. You know, I warned you. I pre-warned you. If you don't believe me, go watch my last live stream. Um, you know, sometimes they really hype these events up and then it's just, it's just nothing. So, at any rate, guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and hop off here. You guys have a fantastic rest of of your Sunday afternoon or your Sunday evening or whatever it's uh, going to be. And uh, I will see you guys tomorrow on another show right here on the photo video show. So thanks again, man. I appreciate everyone that has decided to uh, become a Patreon support the channel. I definitely, definitely appreciate it. You guys have no idea. Um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.